we got lots going on today. We might get into the Cindy Adams thing in a few minutes. I'm obsessed with Cindy Adams and her stupid column because it's so awful. Oh, she's funny. Oh, she's a laugh. She's an ancient broad that's trying to still act hip and I don't know. And she just knows. because she was married to a comedian, she thinks she's a comedian and her jokes are just plain awful. Yep. And then I'm learning that Anthony's couch is going to be here sometime in May. It's like May or something. I've t- I'm telling everybody because I know Jimmy's got to get a new couch. And it just takes forever to get a couch. Of course, you know I I lost my last couch. <laughs> to the to booger. A, to a booger. To a snotting incident. <laughs> Had a booger incident that was, um, yeah, it uh, had guests over the house with children. And, and I was sitting on the couch and a uh, little boy was... Sitting with his father, and the boy dug his uh, finger in his nose and pulled out a booger, I guess, and wiped it on the couch. Wiped it like in between the cushions or something. And the f- father had asked him, you know, what did you do? And he said, I picked my nose. He said, Where is the booger? He goes, In there. And he said he couldn't find it. The father goes, Well, look for it. And he goes, I can't find it. And all I was, I'm sitting, like, I, I, I'm just stiff as a board sitting there. And my head is just spinning. I'm going, oh, my God, I have to throw this couch away. Yeah, you're so contradicting yourself today. Why, Why? do you have a heart on? <laughs> it's stiff as a board. Because you uh, started the show by saying that Howard was agoraphobe. Agoraphobic. I'm agoraphobic. But that's like going out. No, I know. I know. And yeah. I, I was going to I was gonna continue with my statement. A I understand what that is. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, and a germaphobe. Yeah, uh, no, no, it has nothing to do with germs. I don't get it. It's not a germ thing with me. Dude, it's, it's not a germ thing. It's I don't one have a lousy booger. It's a booger. If you really examined what else was going on with that couch, you'd be horrified. No, snot. Dry skin. and Snot strikes a nerve with me that is only surpassed by shit. Only surpassed by shit. My level of disgust goes shit. Now, make sure you write this down, people. It's shit mm-hmm. first mm-hmm. on the list. Disgusting thing ever that could come out of a human being is shit. If it was near me or around me, God forbid, on me, I'd lose my mind. Okay. So that's number one, the evil of all evils to come out of a human body. Second on the list, second is snot. I agree. If snot gets near or around me or, God forbid, on me, I will freak out. If it's on my couch, I throw the couch away. I agree. Third? Splooge? Probably... Pus. Pus? Some form of pus. Yes, pus. So wait, there's, there's like three things you could think of that are worse in your mouth than a load? <laughs> I didn't say in my mouth. Because... You'd rather take a load than eat a booger? Because, Here comes the promo. <laughs> because I've had... No, think of it this way. I'm even talking about myself. So I'm talking about snot or anything coming out of me disgusts me. And if, uh, you know, who hasn't shot a load on their own gut, right? <laughs> it doesn't disgust you. Uh, about, and it goes down to urine, you know, things like that uh, down the line. But urine's one of the least, really. I know. Yeah, it I really is. You take a leak. You like You're leaking down. so yeah, much at this point. It. It's, it's yeah. your best friend. Why not? Right. What about earwax? Earwax is, is pretty That's up, up there. there, too. That's up there. Earwax, probably right after pus. It's like a buttery goodness. <laughs> <laughs> it's tart. You ever put your tongue on your finger after you stick it in the earwax? <laughs> Don't make me. You almost made snot come out of my nose. <laughs> <laughs> you would never eat like a big watery runny booger. Oh, ah! Ah! <laughs> yeah. ah! It's like sucking down a loose piece of pasta. Ah! Stop it! It's got like salty tinge to it. If I you just inadvert- made me you just made me do the cricket snort. If I inadvertently like you suck in and you feel something more than just you've mucus never goes eaten your boogers. Your never. Not one. Not one Dude, time. I can say. In all of my years, I have never, ever, ever eaten one of my boogers. Not once. I have never even contemplated it. Really? I have, ne- I have actually been repulsed at the very thought so as not to even accidentally ingest a booger. I have never, ever, ever you eaten never a y- booger. You never yanked one of them off uh, a, a little hair in the nose, one of those little fat ones? Oh, those are wonderful. Sure. No, and, and if I'm picking at something, I can't even look at it. I have to get it away and off of me and cleanse my hand immediately. It has to go. And when I used to work on the job and see those those uh, uh, construction workers, 
plug off one nostril with the thumb and go. Oh, oh the yeah. snot rocket. And the snot rocket. Those things rock. Uh, it would disturb me for hours, and I couldn't eat my lunch. Bill Madden taught me the snot rocket when I was yeah. back in like junior high. We were playing basketball. He's like, and I need a tissue. He's nope. like, screw that. Just do what I do. Right on, right on the sideline. He didn't care. Right on the cheerleaders if they were too close. If I blow my nose, I have to. Uh... I have to have a mirror right there yeah. too, so I can make sure there's nothing hanging, and and I have to like like make like these things out of the toilet paper or the tissues that I can shove up my nose and twist around and pull out like rubber bands and make sure every bit of it's gone. You know what you do? You wrap the toilet paper around the finger, and then you put the finger in, and you can dig and pick and scrape with your nail. Yeah, but under sometimes the paper. it pushes it up. I found what's better is a loosely packed little twist of toilet paper. And then you can put it up there, jiggle it around a little bit, and it kind of grabs on oh. and pulls it right out. Yeah. So uh, your thoughts, Anthony, on people that eat their own boogers? People that eat their own boogers? These are not people that you want living in your neighborhood. Do you want this as your neighbor, your friend, the person sitting next to you at church? Maybe on the job, on the go, even looking out the window of your automobile as you cruise this great land. Do you want to look over and see some animal picking, digging, straining up to the knuckle to pull out some of that green goodness? <laughs> Take a look at it, slowly roll it between his finger and thumb as he ponders the taste of it. I don't even know what he's thinking when he's gazing into this glistening green orb between his fingers. But what does he do with it, people? Does he get a tissue and dispose of the ugliness? Does he wipe it somewhere never to see it again? No. He looks at it like it's some type of meal and slowly puts it in his mouth and then and then chomps on it between his little teeth before he, I don't know, swallows it puts it between his cheek and gum like a skull. I don't know what goes on with the booger after it goes in his mouth, but it's there. It's horrific. We need to do something about these booger eaters. Thank you. Thank you. And I thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, people. The booger is not... Yes, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. No, great. Thank you. We as non-boogery... Thank you, people. Thank you, please. Thank you. I say, put the booger down. <laughs> Awful. <laughs> Snot is the reason I won't eat rice pudding, says Clark Gifford from <laughs> Whack Bag. I have no idea what that means, but something struck a nerve there. Rice pudding. Rice pudding is an awful invention. Do you know there are dominatrixes that, well, I've read stories. Yeah, of, uh, stop it. Don't even say no, it. No, it's not, it's la, not what you la, think. La, la. It's not what you think. It's not what you think. Snot rockets the it. chest? No, we're, uh, we're, uh, got, you, she'll actually put her nose in your mouth and blow her nose <laughs> in your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> ah, it's worse than I think. You're right. <laughs> That is horrible. <laughs> I'll tell you the most disgusting thing for me is, uh, to be honest with you, uh, yeah. uh, period. That's, there's nothing that gets me yeah. more than that. That, to me, is number one. Clark on Clifford scale. from Whackbag also saying, Snot is like the caviar of body fluids when compared to shit. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> Very funny with the food uh, analogies there, Clark. Yeah, that that can't... Um, you, don't, you don't enjoy the buttery goodness of, uh, <laughs> of the earwax? Ah! <laughs> no. Earwax must also be cleaned out with a rolled-up piece of tissue. He's a, he's a Q-tip. Q-tips freak me out. They're too small. I don't know what they're doing so in what there. Do you, how do you clean your ears? I, I take a piece of tissue paper and roll it up. Roll it up, stick it in there, and wow. <laughs> like that, and then pull it out. And that's just as good. Because I I don't know. They're, they're too hard at the tip sometimes. No. And they're small. You never know how far to stick them in. Yes, if you, you do. stick toilet paper in... Uh, it'll crunch back if you go too far. There's no safety spring on a... Nah. Yes, sir? I now know the problem with his headphones. It's his ears. He's got a wax buildup that's about four inches thick. What? <laughs> no. you got to scrape it out of there with a little... I Q-tip. scrape it out really good with the tissue. I love looking at that yellow on the Q-tip. Oh, yeah. Uh, I no, that. I wind it around like a corkscrew in there. When with I the forget other. to clean my ears for a while and I go in for, you know, some goodness and it comes out, yeah, it'll oh, it'll ski me like out. extra crunchy Oh, gif. my God. I'm like, I didn't know oh. I was lying on peanut butter all night long. <laughs> <laughs> it's just... 
Should I make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich oh. with this? You know how you know your ears are filthy? Like when you scrape it, it's not yellow, but it's a brownish yellow, and it's actually up off the Q-tip. Oh. Almost, <laughs> like, it's not just on the Q-tip. It's like, it's like you pulled a physical piece of something out. <laughs> <laughs> like your Q-tip is wearing a hat. <laughs> oh, God, is that just... Earwax is not a hat. It's like oh. a scab or something. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> you know, this is something that freaks me out. I've been a cop now 13 years, <laughs> yeah. and I've worked all over the city. There's not one police station in this city that I have not gone into and walked into a urinal that there's not boogers on the wall. Oh, the people picking and wiping? I don't know if it's one cop that just goes around the whole city and picks oh. his nose and wipes the booger on the, the wall, wall, but there's not one one urinal in the you whole have, city. You ever lean forward and lick that wall? Yeah! <laughs> wow! <laughs> Why not? And then they try and, like, sometimes they try and see how far up on the wall they can get it. And the prisoners do that with shit, too. Like they'll, like they'll, monkeys throwing their crap around. Right. I've seen the cells where they'll, oh. where they'll uh, like, you know, I guess they'll do the finger in the ass or something, and then they try and see how far they can get it up on the wall. Up on the wall. Well, that's a that's little contest. That's great. A little contest for them <laughs> Jimmy, to Jimmy, did you try that when you were time? downtown oh, in the tomb? I hated it. I tell you, that made me a better citizen. I'll never that's get arrested did. again. Never get arrested, Oof. see? They taught you a lesson. One night was all it took. That's Brutal. Great. Oh, it was oh. awful. God, that's disgusting. Yeah, the booger on the thing. The, the, the problem with the booger on the precinct wall is if you lick it, it won't come off. It's like a hard little bump. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a genital wart on the wall. People, it's kids would rub, like wipe snot and boogers <laughs> under their desk. Yeah. And sometimes if you were just kind of hanging out and maybe you had your hand on one leg and you go to, uh, like, I don't know, tap your foot. For some reason, you touch the bottom of the desk yeah. and feel just lumps under there. When a crusty one would fall off. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I still get skeeved out just thinking about it. I have a confession. The God's honest truth. I was a shock student, Anthony, back in the day. A shock, shock student. student. And uh, we'd be in some of these really boring like history classes and stuff. Yeah. And I was known. And it got to the point where people would collect money because they couldn't believe this was actually going on. I started it out as a goof. And then the you know how things spread are, are around school, and yeah. I wonder why I didn't start dating until I was like a senior in uh -oh. high school. Uh, then they would start you know getting collections because they didn't believe it, so I would do it, and I would get my lunch money. And what was this? I would uh, I would reach under the desk, feel <laughs> for a good one. A good what? Wad of gum that's been there for weeks, <sighs> maybe years. Who knows? Uh, Usually the hard ones. <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> Scrape it out. You weren't that kid. I swear to God, I was, <sighs> and I would, uh, yeah, pop it in my mouth for the, uh, for the enjoyment of everybody screaming and yelling as the teacher had his back to the class, and then he would turn around wondering what the hell was going on. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that was, uh, that was me. Was, that is really disgusting. I was that kid, just for a little while. It was a little stage I went through, it. A little stage. Yeah. Were you ever just sitting somewhere and have a chunk of wax fall out of your ear? What? No. No. Never. Dan. No. Dan from Pennsylvania, I guess, has had that happen. Thanks for having this discussion right as I was uh, eating my yogurt. <laughs> yeah, yogurt, not a good thing to eat during this. Sometimes if I'm sitting there and eating something and maybe it's got oregano in it and the oregano kind of looks snotty, I have to take it out of the plate and hide it. Really? Oregano yeah. doesn't bother me. No, anything booger-like even. So that we, now bringing it back, that's why I had to get rid of the couch. Oh yeah, yeah the couch. The booger was in there somewhere, yeah. couldn't be found. So I couldn't sit, I couldn't recline, I couldn't lay, you know, lay down, and not think of that booger. But if you couldn't find it, tasks me. The booger tasks me. Maybe the kid never had the booger on his finger. You ever think of that? What do you mean? Because you you couldn't find it that day. He wiped it somewhere, and it's somewhere. Boogers don't just disappear, Opie. It was somewhere in that couch. Couldn't you have it professionally cleaned? I mean, how, if you couldn't find the booger, maybe it was in a cushion somewhere. So you'd never see it. Might have been able to have it cleaned. It just had this booger stigma to it now that I can't, I it just couldn't get rid of it. Does the new couch now have the plastic on it? Yeah, I haven't gotten the new couch yet. I'm not getting it until uh, next month because it takes forever to get a couch. Are you still using this couch? No. Where we, is it? We have no couch in our, I, I, have to, I sit <laughs> On a uh, a desk. Why don't like you just keep the old booger couch until you got the new couch? Oh no! Just throw Where's a sheet or something over it to work. Booger couch hauled away as trash. Why didn't you put a sheet over it and just use it until that thing came? And put what's a, big... a sheet gonna do? What kind of booger protective qualities does a sheet have, Jimmy? Are that you I don't kidding know about? me? Yeah. 
What kind of uh, a booger shield does a sheet? You have? didn't drop anthrax on your couch. It's just a yummy snack. It was the. Oh and you should have put the uh, the couch up on eBay. Someone would have bought the Anthony Booger couch. I did not want that couch in the house anymore. It had to go. You know how many other places he touched in your apartment with boogers on his fingers in your exactly. house? Exactly. And and we were going around for about two days spraying. Uh, Windex and and uh, Formula 405 and everything else on the walls and lights with, and because they run around with like they eat and then they have their greasy little hands and they touch everything. Yep. I saw my beautiful big screen television and I've seen big screen TVs at people's houses that have kids. It it is just a mess of smeared little kid hands all over the place. And I looked at my TV one day, and the sun was hitting the screen right, and I just saw this little handprint, whack, right on my screen. And I'm like, God the damn it. You threw the TV away? No, because it wasn't Booger. It oh. was a TV. And TVs aren't known for their absorbing qualities like a couch. And hopefully you don't lay on it. And I don't lay on it. I just watch it. So I had it, but I had it, you know, <laughs> with Windex and, and get that all cleaned off. And I was just like, God, how do people have these little things running around their house? Little, ugh, like Blair Witch, little handprints on the walls. Turn around. Stand in the corner. I'm going to kill him. You're a lunatic. I'm not a lunatic. Something I'm a child hater. <laughs> something is going on in that head of yours. Yeah. No, I, I, I need things th th my way. The end of your life is going to be spent in the desert inn in Vegas and <laughs> the entire top floor having ice cream made especially for you. What's wrong with a life like that? You have to, the maid would have to touch things with a certain amount of tissues. They couldn't open a can without five or six tissues. Some day, have you been on the road with this guy? He's, He's a already... take charge kind of guy. Anthony's already changing into him on the road. What? We see Anthony get his baggage, usually at the airport that of the city we're staying in, and yeah. then we kind of... If we're lucky, we we get to see him for the broadcast, and the rest for of the broadcast. Time, he's in his hotel room with I, the shades down, out. and <laughs> let me ask you: out. Would you do this? And this is not even as gross as it sounds, but yeah. like in a public toilet, when you lift the lid, would you ever scrape your finger under some of the brown stuff <laughs> under the toilet lid? Oh God! <laughs> and just sniff your finger. <laughs> <laughs> uh, stop it! You know the crud <laughs> that builds up on a public toilet, though, right? Or any toilet? Yes, I'm fully aware of this crud. <laughs> You know that kid took one of those boogers and, and put it right on your pillow. Stop it! <laughs> well, he did. He was bouncing all over. Antony, 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 Antony. Can't say oh. your name. He's too small. Antony. <laughs> little oh. dirty. Probably touch his little pee. Like, you know, because kids pee and they touch their helmets. Probably touch your, your pillow. The pillow. The pillow. Uh, <laughs> all right. Now you're treading on a different area. <laughs> or he scratched his little childish bum. Oh. Put his Stop face. it. You know how they scratch like their Like a ass. baby chimp. Yeah. So they're just always touching and wiping. Itch it and then touch Uncle Anthony's pillows. Uh, 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 and, and how old is the kid? I guess they're like 17. seven, eight, uh, seven, <laughs> seventeen. Well, you know the kid is wiping his own ass, and you know, you know, a seven-year-old's not doing a good job with that. So you, you got to think there's like microscopic, you know, fecal matter on I his fingers. I disinfected the house. Did disinfected. You? And if all else fails, I'll be moving soon anyway. Do they use I'm your soap? Looking, I'm Trish looking for... House. I know I just moved in, but I I really am looking to move. Why do you want to move? Is there a booger in the garage somewhere? What's the matter with he you? He wants to move because he realized people were actually in this house. So his new goal is to find a house where it's going to be perfectly I safe need from out... <laughs> out I was looking for new construction. Yeah. And nobody will ever visit me. Yeah, I won't let anyone in this house. <laughs> I can't wait for the day that Anthony shows up in a bubble costume. <laughs> <laughs> Rolling through the door, yeah. I'm slowly but surely noticing you're changing. <laughs> yeah, a little I bit, a little bit. No guests. <laughs> no guests. I might actually have like a cabana by the pool where people can stay that has to be bombed every so often by an exterminator. Or, or, something. or they'll be doing the show. You'll be actually in that room where the interns are and no one yeah. can come in there and talk <laughs> no to you. No one can come in there. Reading the news. <laughs> I'm not, I don't think I'm that. You have to put crazy. those big gloves on and and reach through the wall. To oh read yeah, the you can have like when you work with nuclear stuff. <laughs> yeah. That's how yeah, Anthony will be reading reach the papers in. before the show. <laughs> yeah, I have to reach into the studio here and grab this and go. <laughs> with my big bulky <laughs> outbreak gloves. Well, Anthony, let's see if this would bother you. Let's go to Tom and. Uh, All right, it's Formula 409. Sorry, I was off uh, a couple of numbers on my cleaning. What did you say? 408, 405, I think. Oh. Yeah. Well, the difference is 405 probably does nothing for booger or fecal removal. That's right. 409 is the stuff you needed. Let's yeah. say hi to Tom. He's on the Cape. Cape Cod, that is. Tom? Yes. 
Hey, old hey. Aunt Sugar Tits. Hi, Tom on the Cape. Hey. All right, I work in a prison uh, down on Cape Cod, Bonsville House of Correction. And uh, we have a child molester there. And he has hep C, AIDS, and he has a colostomy bag. Oh, Jesus. And he's an unruly inmate. So, you know, every now and again, when he gets a, when he gets a little fussed up, he starts throwing the stuff around. They have to bring the move team in. So they bring the move team in this one time, and uh, instead of cuffing up and being escorted down a seg like a nice little lad, he decides to spray us all with it. And I have a fantastic time. The shield guy gets it all over everybody. Oh, it was good times all the way around. A colostomy bag being sprayed at you. He won the unlucky lottery. That's hardcore. What happened to him? Um, well, let's just say he fell down. Good. And, uh, he broke stuff. <laughs> so, you know. <laughs> he broke stuff. All but, right. All right, guys. Punch it out. Thank you, Tom. You can't blast Thank a bunch you. of correction officers with liquid shit and not expect to get a savage beating for it. <laughs> Some type of <laughs> retribution. What do you think they're going to do? Laugh it off? <laughs> oh, look, you got some on you. Yeah, all over my white shirt, you silly goose. <laughs> yeah, oh, you. Because, <laughs> uh, you know, colostomy bags probably got pulp in it. It's not pure liquid. Ugh. It's like stew. It hasn't gone through that mold. <laughs> that mold that is your intestine that kind of gives it that shape. There's a fingernail in it. Let's go to, <laughs> let's go to Fan Dick. Fan Dick? Hey, what's up, boys? How are you, Fan Dick? I uh, can hardly hear you, but you know that. Um, yeah, I had Paul and Ron on, but it's 10 o'clock now, man. You're heading into the midday, so the show just ended. Oh, right. The morning shows are only on till 10. Yeah, we kind of screwed up the, the bit, I think. Damn. Damn. Well, maybe we could do it from... Uh, D.C. We're, yeah, we're broadcasting from D.C. tomorrow and Wednesday, and uh, we'll have full capabilities yeah. for a regular radio show. So People can hear us better on the phones. So oh, yeah, not a bad better. idea. Yeah, sure. All right. Well, All we, right, well, I'll try back uh, tomorrow or something then, man. Punch right, out. Thank you, Bye, yeah. mister. Yeah, we blew that. We wanted to check out some more uh, morning shows today, yeah. but uh, I guess that is not going to happen. Ugh. Is Ozzy coming here today? or mm -hmm. What time? Between 10, 10.30, I'm guessing. They said he might run a little late. We're prepared. All right. All right. All right, why don't we take a quick break then and uh, regroup. Is my sandwich here? It's right next to you. Oh. Hey, Hawk, are we ever going to clear this area for the legend to sit? It's a messy countertop. You can't have Ozzy come in and see a messy countertop. No. Jimmy's been working on his uh, Ozzy stuff all morning, I noticed. What, what have you written down there? Just a couple of thought questions I may have. Not thoughts. It's, it's not too many wow. questions, to be honest with you. Dude, yeah. you're going to be the one, though. No, we'll all talk to him. Nope. I'm not talking to him. Much, you're so. not talking to him? No, this is your moment. Well, let's I want Jimmy to have his to moment. Him. Well, I'll chat with them. I mean, I'm gonna, the, have a little chit chat. You're not gonna be, yeah. you're not gonna be leaning on us. It'll be a little awkward, but we're gonna. Uh, oh, I'll believe me. If I have to, I'll just yap at him until he walks out the door. Believe me, I can talk to Ozzy. Right. I'm just. Well, that's happen. what we're gonna do. How many times can you say that you're God? Nobody wants to hear that for an hour. No one wants to hear me talk to Ozzy. No one wants Anthony to hear Anthony talk to Ozzy. Not true. You guys do but, great interviews. With, it doesn't matter about. It's your obsession with Ozzy that uh, is going to come to light today. But he's, well, everyone knows that he's also still the, a rock legend, and you're still having a big guest on the show. So just doing a regular regular interview is important. And, and don't haven't we spoken with him so many times on the phone that he knows us? Isn't he yeah. our friend? Yeah. So we, we can talk to him. Yeah, uh, of course. Right. And don't worry, we won't throw you on, under the bus or anything today. <laughs> I don't care. We wouldn't know. do that. How can you? No, we really wouldn't do that to you. We know how important this is to you. Yeah, let's not do that. Ben, an Aussie update? or? No, I don't, there's no update. He's going to be here sometime between 10 and 11. In worst case, we can keep the channel on after 11. Okay. That is the beauty of satellite. All right, why don't we take a break? We'll regroup. Why are they showing Tony Dan's in a stupid uh, Spider-Man outfit? Because it's wow, hot. That was his Spider-Man <laughs> outfit that he had his big hog. Oh, it's his 100 shows. So yeah. they're doing a whole retrospect. 100 shows. With Tony Danza. Wow. wow. You know? Yeah, that was where he had his uh, Spider-Man costume for Halloween, and he was upset because uh, it showed off his big hog. And... Uh, he he wanted, uh, what did he say, I could use an apron right about now? Uh, it seems like just yesterday, a hundred shows. Who's wow. he tap dancing with? Well, wow, there's a great... Oh, his little uh, girl there. Oh, this must have been fun. I wish I would have seen this one live.